Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bookshelf Odyssey. Today I'm doing the Garbagist Truth or Dare tag. All right, so this year I am doing uh, Garbagist and I'm enjoying it actually. I'm reading a couple of things right now. Uh, I'm reading A Penny Dreadful. It's called Skeleton Crew or Wildfire Ned and it's actually given me Pirates of the Caribbean vibes. There's skeleton pirates, there's uh, shocking murders, um, skeleton parts running around. It's great. It's great fun. Uh, I think it was written in the 1860s and it's it's just fantastic. It, it's very overly dramatic and I uh, have enjoyed that. And then I also picked up a book called Amish Vampires in Space, which uh, the title is certainly the funniest part of this book. Um, I am about halfway through and it's a good sized book. It's about four or 500 pages long. And I guess I kind of was hoping there would actually be Amish and vampires in space, but the three haven't, at least two of them are, we haven't really had much vampire interaction yet and we're already halfway through. So, you know, I'll, I'll wait and to have my opinion when the book is done, but it is actually a good story. It, it is a much better story than a title like that deserved. So uh, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, but I'll talk about that maybe in a in a wrap up video. Um, I'm hoping to read some Indiana Jones this month as well um, to uh, to round out my my Garbagas. But I'm going to do this Garbagas tag. It was created by uh, Criminali. And so let's go ahead and uh, see what the questions are. Uh, I haven't been tagged by anyone and. Uh, I just wanted to be able to do this to be a part of the uh, the Garbagist uh, group. I know there have been a few tag taggers that said, um, if you want to do it, consider yourself tagged. All right. Uh, first question. How would you personally describe trashy books? Uh, personally, I would describe a trashy book as something with a lot of uh, sex in it, a lot of gratuitous smut, things like that. Um, possibly... I would even go as far as to say books that contain a lot of unnecessary uh, vulgarity. You know, I, I'm a pretty um, boring person, I guess, and I don't like a lot of that spice in my books. Uh, I, I feel like it kind of is sometimes, uh, quite often unnecessary, uh, never written well, and it leaves both the reader and maybe the writer feeling very awkward <laughs> afterwards. Um, <laughs> so say what you will about that. Uh, all that to say, um, I am not one that would normally read books I would consider trash. Uh, so you got series like, um, you know, the Western series, Long Arm, and, uh, you know, books that just seem to be there uh, to promote what, what many would consider to be, um, you know, pornography. What's the trashiest book you own? Well, I don't really own a lot of them. I would probably have to say... I would probably have to say the uh, the Claire Ferguson and Russ Van Alstyne mystery series written by uh, Julia Spencer Fleming. The, the two main characters eventually hook up and their love for each other is very passionate. And the one I read just recently uh, was book seven. One was a soldier. And uh, it there's a scene towards the beginning that... Um, when Claire comes back from serving in the military, she and Russ are reunited. And, and let's just say it's it's uh, really awkward and uncomfortable. And I had to skip a few pages. So there is that. I mean, I get it, but let's, <laughs> I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll try to get through this video without giggling like a schoolboy. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, you know what? Next question. Let's just, uh, moving on. Uh, question three, what is the trashiest situation you have ever been in? Um, honestly, I, I I'm pretty boring. So I guess I'll, as far as that goes, I'll just say it's none of your business. <laughs> I'm old and I'm tired and <laughs> you, you know, for me, I just want to come home, sit in my chair, fall asleep with a good cup of tea and a good book. Simple pleasures. Uh, question four, have you ever read a book so spicy that you cease to be master of your domain? Or which book has the best smut scene you've ever read? Well, as I said, I don't really read a lot of that. And if it gets to be too much, I'll just DNF the book. Really, the, um, I guess the book uh, Book Lovers 
had some scenes in it that I don't know if I would cease to be the master of my, my domain, but uh, there's one particular scene in the library that the two main characters engaged in that and I guess that's as far as I'll, I'll, that's all I'll say about that. And then uh, have you ever given or received a trashy book as a gift? And if so, what was the book and your, their reaction? Um, yes. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was given, um, I got for Christmas one year, a bunch of mysteries, uh, sci-fi books. Um, you know, I just told my family, you know, I, I just, just give me anything. I'm, I'm looking for new authors, new books, whatever. And I got a lot of good stuff. I got, uh, this year I got some Sherlock Holmes, uh, a lot, a lot of good things, but I got a book in the, uh, series by Dick Francis who writes about, um, mysteries set at a, uh, uh, horse, horse racing or something. I don't know. All, all I know is I had opened up a couple, and I was maybe 16 at the time, 15, you know, I would have probably looked back at it now as fine, but there were a couple of scenes mentioned and described there that, um, I wasn't expecting, let's put it that way. And, you know, the poor person who gave me the book or gave me the, you know, the collection that the books were, were just like, Oh, I, you know, I saw them. I thought they were mysteries. So I thought of you and, and yeah, they, they ended up being books. I, I was not allowed to read. Uh, th that was just more of a, uh, kind of a, uh, a funny, uh, reaction. And then, uh, did you ever read trashy books from your parents' shelves as a kid? I can't say that my parents had a lot of books on their shelves, unfortunately. My dad had some Louis L'Amour, and they're not too bad. I do recall that there was a book that taught kids about the birds and the bees that I came across, possibly at an age I was too young to really, um, for it to be uh, an appropriate read. But, um, you know, you, had to, you have to learn somewhere, I guess. And I suppose it's better to learn from a book intended for children to, to learn about that than it is, um, you know, stumbling across, across something trashy and um, completely ruining your entire outlook on life. Anyway, so yeah, I don't really have any um, exciting stories to tell uh, for that. I, you know, man, I have lived a pretty boring life as I reflect on it now. And you know what? I think I'm okay with that. Um, some of the dares uh, say, show your favorite book with a spicy cover. Uh, I don't really have those. I, you know, I've had like, like I, I just kind of, an, I sound like a broken record. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe uh, this book, the um, Amish vampires in space would be considered a uh, spicy cover. I mean, you know, look at the way she, she's looking at you like she wants to eat you, but you know, not, not too bad when it comes to spice. One of the dares here is, um, Read out loud a trashy, spicy paragraph. All right, prepare yourself, okay? Uh, let's make ourselves comfortable. Dim the light. This is from uh, an old classic called uh, Emma by Jane Austen. I'll set the scene. It's at a ball, at a dance, and Emma and Mr. Knightley are talking. Mr. Knightley has just done something very heroic for a dear friend of Emma's. He danced with Harriet Smith when nobody else at the ball would. My girl, she is swooning over Mr. Knightley, uh, although she's not willing to admit it. And uh, prepare yourself because this is capital H-A-W-T, hot. They were interrupted by the bustle of Mr. Weston calling on everybody to begin dancing again. Come, Mr. Woodhouse, Miss Otway, Miss Fairfax, what are you all doing? Come, Emma, set your companions the example. Everybody is lazy. Everybody is asleep. He's, he's encouraging them to go and dance, to start dancing again. So uh, Emma looks to Mr. Knightley. I am ready, said Emma, whenever I am wanted. Whom are you going to dance with? asked Mr. Knightley. She hesitated a moment and then replied, With you, if you will ask me. Will you? said he, offering his hand. Indeed I will. You have shown that you can dance, and you know we are not really so much brother and sister as to make it at all improper. Brother and sister? No, indeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to need a minute here, folks, okay? 
This is spicy because in a society where a man and a woman cannot even touch, um, they're going to dance together. And Emma basically expressing her wish. She says, I am ready whenever I am wanted. And Mr. Knightley picking up on the cue says and asks, will you? There's consent. There is questioned. You know, he is not assuming she's going to dance with him just because he's a man. And oh my goodness, this scene is hot. And in the recent film version of it, uh, Emma uh, made in 2020, um, that scene, it, I mean, it melted my computer's hard drive when I watched it. Okay. It is hot stuff. This book is too much. Um, the, the fire alarm just went off outside. So I better, I better just put that away. The four, third dare says, show a book you own, but wouldn't read in public. All right. Again, if there's children here, make sure they're not in the room uh, because this book, um, you know, this is a book that I would be ashamed to read in public. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. Okay. I know it's not really that trashy or an embarrassing of a book, but what, what can I say? I'm a boring guy. I'm really boring. And I, on some level, I, I wouldn't necessarily be ashamed to read it in public, but if I were to read a book like this in public, um, I would get um, a lot of guys laughing, mocking, ridiculing me, and sometimes I just get tired of being so perfect, you know? <laughs> and um, it, it can be a hassle to, um, to have to deal with that all the time, but... Uh, no, I really wouldn't be afraid to read that in public, uh, Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I, I really can't think of any book I would be ashamed to read in public. Um, and then the final question is, show a clip from or a link to your first booktube video, uh, which I will. I think, hopefully, I've gotten better in some ways since then. Um, I, I still have areas I, I hope to improve in uh, on, on this channel, but uh, I really just love talking about books and letting the camera roll. I don't feel like I have a lot of awkwardness talking to myself or talking to a video. Uh, I actually rather enjoy it um, more than talking to an actual person. So I don't know what that says about me, but uh, there you go. All right. Well, that's the, uh, the very mild uh, version of the uh, Garbagas truth or dare tag. Um, people uh, don't subscribe to my channel for the spice. <laughs> they come for the sugar, right? <laughs> Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you've done this tag, let me know. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and like the video as that helps our channel grow. So until next time, everyone, happy reading and take care.